welcome to another episode of War. I'm Sabrina Salas Matanani. Between the hills of Talafofo and Jotnya is Menengen, the site of a concentration camp during World War II. Thousands of Chamorros were forced to march to Menengen. Many children, women, and men died from the treacherous journey, but others survived. It was almost 20 years ago the Menengen Memorial Foundation was established so that we always remember. Is everybody aware of the schedule of what's going to happen? All right. Here in a conference room in Hagatnya, the planning is underway to once again host the day-long commemoration to honor Guam's greatest generation. Former Senator Willie Flores is the president of the Menengen Memorial Foundation. And I want to thank all of you for volunteering because it's not easy to put an event like this together. It's, uh, I'll just warn you, it's a very meaningful event, but it's a very emotional event. So get ready to, to, you know, to, to deal with those emotions when you hear them. Because they're 73 years later, those emotions are still uh, very, very real. During the Japanese occupation of Guam, thousands of Chamorros were suddenly ordered to march to Menengen. Senator Regine Bisco Lee is serving as this year's chairperson of the event. Several people who were sick and injured along the way, ended up dying on the forced march. And so in our commemoration, we remember them. But many of them um, stayed for a, a long duration at this place. Um, they came with the clothes on their back. Many of them had little to no provisions. Um, and they were kind of left there with no shelter, no real food or water. Um, so if you can imagine having to leave everything, you're into your home and, and walk with your family from someplace as far as Jigo all the way down to the Elik Bridge in Jotnya, um, that's quite a considerable distance. And, and many of them uh, suffered atrocities along the way. There were people who were beheaded along the way. And, but for the grace of God, they made it to this site and then they had to live out the remaining weeks and months of the, of the war relegated to this concentration camp. So it's something that is really difficult, I think, for the younger generation to even fathom. But I think that's one of the reasons why it's so important that we continue to tell these stories. Stories that you won't necessarily find in history books or museums across America. Former Senator Frank Bloss Jr. is the president of the Guam War Survivors Memorial Foundation. Like the Menengen Group, Bloss's was formed to ensure Guam's story is not forgotten. The foundation began in 2009, um, and it was a res as a result of, um, uh, we, I was on a trip to D.C., uh, brought my wife along, and I was uh, had a, my other, uh, another colleague, Senator Tina Barnes, with me, and um, they wanted to look at uh, some of the exhibits that were there, the museums, and uh, they saw, the, we went and, and, and inter uh, saw the, the Holocaust Museum, then they wanted to see what you know, what the War in the Pacific Museum had, you know, for Guam. Uh, went to the Smithsonian where they had the, the exhibit. And unfortunately, when within the 10,000 square foot exhibition of the War in the Pacific, Guam was only on a poster board that was no more than 18 by 34 inches uh, with a little red dot saying this was where the offensive into Japan started. And that was it. My wife, very distraught, uh, said, this is not right, something has got to be done, we have to. Uh, we got to honor and remember our survivors. Came home, we got with some very close friends, um, put our money together, and uh, started the War Survivor Memorial Foundation. And since then, everything that we, we do is to honor and recognize our survivors. And to think that a place that is U.S. territory or U.S. soil is not really spoken about, um, whether it's in U.S. history books or, or World War II history books. And if we're relying on other people to tell our story, we're never going to get anywhere. So I agree with Senator Bloss. We need to take ownership of this. This is our story. We need to make sure that we are saying it out loud to ourselves and to our children and make sure that they continue to perpetuate it. It's extremely important. Um, in order to really have a sense of where we're going in the future, we need to make sure that we have a clear understanding of our past. And so I think that's another reason 
um, that it's so important to really have this time, especially at this time of year, to focus um, in preparation for Liberation Day. We're focusing on all of the, thing, the things that our Manamku had to endure to even get to that point. And what they had to endure is almost too difficult and painful to believe. The story of Manangan has to be told. One of the most disappointing things I've ever heard was when President Bush, I, I forget which, which president, father or the son, probably because, like most people in the States, you know, they don't know what happened here in Guam, but the, the President of the United States himself said that Hawaii was the only place where American soil was destroyed or, or damaged uh, during, during World War II. So this is the kind of educational, educational um, uh, knowledge that we have to instill, not only in those that, that are, we are partners with in the States, but our families here, because me, you guys know that many folks our age, uh, or many folks your age, you know, don't know what happened at Manengo and at Faha, at Tinta, at Fena. This year, our featured speaker was a lady whose brother and sister survived Fena. And when you hear about it, you'll be freak out, freaking out because she, the brother and sister, survived Fena. They were part of the people that were grenaded. You know, the Japanese threw hand grenades into the cave, but they survived by hiding under the dead bodies. You know, and so imagine you're you know, hiding like Tina here, right? And you feel, like I said, forgive me for being graphic, and you feel the bayonet going into Tina. You know, imagine that. Imagine you are a, uh, <clears throat> how many of you here are mothers? Okay. Imagine you're a mother, you have a young girl, 13 to 18 years old, and you have to take chicken blood when you see the Japanese coming and they, they, the rumor goes through the camp that they're coming to take the young girls and you take chicken and you kill it and you take the blood quickly and you s smear it all over her to make it look like it's that time of the month just to protect your child. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. So this is the kind of stuff that we cannot forget. We also cannot forget the, uh, the will of our Chamor people to uh, survive. And to share the story of what happened in Menengen, the day-long commemoration traced the journey our Menemko were forced to make to get to Menengen. It's called the Freedom Run. This is a commemorative run, okay, to kind of follow the general route that our folks took when they were being forced to march, right? So that's why we have runs from Jigo, uh, we have runs from, from uh, Piti, we have runs from uh, um, Melissa and Inalahan, we have runs from Haga. And so these are the places, you know, the general directions. This year's runners were from the Department of Corrections, the Guam Fire Department, U.S. Coast Guard, the 15th Criminal Justice Academy, Guam Customs and Quarantine, and the Guam Police Department. Each were designated their starting points, but the Freedom Run started at the Chiguian Massacre site, where volunteers were enlisted from the Guam Army and Air National Guard. So it's just been tradition, and we just carried it on as, as how we uh, started, I, I believe it's, it's uh, you know, uh, pride and honor uh, that we did this. So, uh, the, the, the air site, we're, uh, we're asked to, uh, someone was asked to take the lead and I, I, I actually volunteered to take the lead, you know, and I, I sought out a lot of our, our, our runners here for the air site. But uh, with me, I, I just wanted to help coordinate uh, with, with the Army to, to, uh, to do the run because um, I was telling these guys that my mom was part of the, the Menengan March. So, uh, you know, I felt back then, because I've never really, I was, I, was, I was really young when I heard that story, and my mom had passed away a long time ago, but, but, uh, but I just felt in my heart that, uh, you know, uh, maybe I can, can give back or try to trace their, their, their footsteps and see how they felt. And, uh, and their sacrifice that they made. Like members of the Guard who volunteered as a way to honor their parents and survivors, so did Roseanne villagomez Uggen, who is now part of the Menengen Memorial Foundation. This is her first year to volunteer. I had wanted to give back. I actually, uh, we did, um, I'm part of the family that does the Christmas display, and there was a scene that was dedicated to Menengen. Uh, we were assisted by some of the Menenga Memorial uh, Foundation members mm -hmm. and we had one scene that was dedicated to Menenga and so um, I had committed to joining this and it's been a really 
worthwhile learning experience for me. Um, I have parents who also did the march, and uh, but they were very young and didn't really talk m much about the war. Uh, and so it's been every day or every meeting we have, I, I learn something new, you know, a new story. And, and so the, the commitment that the foundation members have had to keep the memory going has been very inspiring for me. Before the runners would begin their journey, a send-off ceremony was led by Senator Talina Nelson and GIGO Vice Mayor Tony Sanchez. We understand you are running the Chiguin flag with the Meningan flag on behalf of our people who suffered through World War II and those who perished. On behalf of those who survived to rebuild our home, our way of life, to see our children, you embracing their history as a source of strength. Would, Would you, you honor us by allowing us to pass these flags from our hands to yours as a symbol of the suffering of our people during that dark time in our history and the delivery of these flags as a symbol of freedom, the survival of the Chamorro spirit, and peace would honor us in this way. It is our greatest privilege to receive these flags from you and carry them in your honor. Run swiftly and safely with honor and pride knowing that you represent everything good and honorable about our people. Hasu Teguyen, Hasu Menengen. Biba. Biba. After completing the run, all of the runners would converge at the Elig Bridge, the entrance to the Menengen concentration camp. There they met with Juan Guzman, a war survivor, to give him their flags. From there, they all walked in to the Menengen memorial site. On behalf of the Guam Police Department and Chief Joe Cruz, it was an honor to carry these flags for you and all the uh, people that suffered from World War II on this Menengen uh, run. Well, okay, thank you, sir. 83-year-old Guzman hasn't missed a memorial service since the Menengen Memorial Foundation started hosting them almost 20 years ago. Matter of fact, in the past, he's actually participated in the Freedom Run by running from his home village of Agate all the way to Menengen. I decided I'd as long as I live, I will never miss this uh, event because I'm, uh, I survived the uh, Menengen March. While Guzman walked the mile and a half trek to the Menengen Memorial site, many other survivors rode a designated VIP charter bus. They were greeted by Joint Region Marianas Rear Admiral Shoshana Chatfield and her husband. Half a day. Good day. It's uh, just a real honor to be here with you today uh, to recognize this day, uh, the impact that it has had on yourselves, on your families, on this island. And uh, we wish you the very best of memories and the very closest of relationships to those ancestors who have gone before you and the family that you currently have with you today. I, I wish you a very, very good day. And all of these folks were here at the Menegan Camp. So, yeah. so it's, a, it's a great honor and privilege, guys, and let's uh, give her a big hand. And guess what? She's going to walk with us to escort you folks in. So she's going to, yes. And she brought her better, ha better half. Dave, yes, yes. Dave, come and wave hello. My husband, Dave. <laughs> Thank you all. I'm looking forward to it. According to Foundation President Willie Flores, this was the first time an admiral had participated in the Menengen Memorial Service. On behalf of the Menengen Memorial Foundation, we are very proud and uh, honored to do this uh, commemoration march to remember the hardships that you folks went through, to remember the sufferings that you folks went through, to remember those who didn't make it, to remember those who made it but are not with us today. The Meningo Memorial Foundation exists for the only, the only purpose is to honor you 
and the things you did and all the bravery that you exhibited in those times, because if it wasn't for you, we would not be here. Some of those who were on the VIP bus included war survivors Francisco and Delacio, Francisco Borja, and Jose Blas. You know, uh, for one thing, uh, it brings back a lot of memories for me, you know, because uh, I, I was, uh, uh, how do I say it, <laughs> intern or camp here, you, you know, during Japanese. I was just a young, young boy. I was about 10 years old, you know, when, uh, when the uh, Japanese say now to this kind of concentration. Can you tell me what you remember? It, yeah, it was, uh, you know, how people at that time, Japanese landed, they all got panicked, they don't know what to do, just whatever the uh, mayor or the leader in our group said, uh, let's take a rest. So sometimes we just, they forced them. They, they forced them to a uh, book. But it's, it was so, uh, to bring back memories, it's just, you know, a lot of people suffer from it. And uh, lucky that we're still alive, thing. Like hit Mr. Blouse right here, and myself, we're still alive. Yeah, that's why we came here for this uh, occasion. This is, this is the first time that I've been here. First time. This is, and I'm, uh, I'm actually happy to uh, be here, to actually bring that memory to the people and uh, remember them, the people that, uh, that, that, that they're not here. And, uh, you know, like the old saying, uh, spiritual support for them, and uh, may we be again one of these days. Beautiful. I was, I was only seven years old mm -hmm. when uh, the Japanese came to Guam. Mm -hmm. Then we went to Barragara. Then uh, after Barragara, we uh, forced march to Meningo with no reason why. And uh, the war is is uh, is hell. I got a few brothers, everybody died except me and my other brother. So we only have two live out of the film children. Did they die during the war? Yeah, one, one of them died during the war time. Painful memories, but yet they seemed happy, perhaps because they persevered, survived, so that we always remember. I'm so glad you came. As Guam's war survivors stepped off the bus, they were gathered with other island VIPs from the government and the local military's top brass. Please put your hands together for our war survivors who have just arrived here with Tali Okay, we are here today to honor everybody who suffered through World War II. We are here to honor those who are no longer with us. We do this in your honor, whether you were at Faha, Tinta, Chaguian, Fenna, Umafit, Asinan, Manengun, any of those places, we are here to honor you. And because we respect what you've done for us, it is now my pleasure.
to ask you to please hand this survivor's banner and flag over to the mayors and uh, to the senators that are with us. And would you please escort the Manamco to where the uh, to where the banner will be hung. And we'd also like to ask the runners to gather up here because they will be presenting the banner, their uh, flags, right after that. With the banner hung, the torches were lit and the Menengan flag was posted. A little bit of history behind the flag. Uh, this, was, this flag was run by Tun Juan Guzman from Agate, himself a Menengan survivor. When this memorial was first dedicated. Tun Juan ran the entire route from Hoggett to Menengan in honor of those who were here in 2004 and 2005. And this flag has been the standard symbol of the Menengan Memorial since 2004. So again, we're having the posting of the Menengan flag. The Judiciary of Guam's Marshals Corps presented the colors, followed by the National Anthem and Guam Hymn, performed by Dolores Santos and the Guam Territorial Band. Inifresi by Marley Kitachai and the Harao Academy, Senator Regine Bisco Lee provided the opening remarks. The Democrat senator's first time to Menengen was when she was in high school. Her father had helped organize one of the memorial services. When is in half a day, everyone. And thank you for being here to participate in this very special, very solemn event. To do as Masi in particular, to our war survivors, who have come here today to share your powerful stories. We honor you for your resilience and for keeping alive the memory of those who suffered and those who lost their lives during our island's darkest chapter. As we stand here on this July day in the jungle, nestled in one of our island's most beautiful areas, it's very hard for us to picture what happened here at the Menengen concentration camp. But we must never forget what happened here. Over seven decades ago, our people were forced to march across the island from as far as Jigo, with their children in their arms and with what few possessions they had, with some perishing along the way. To converge here and be held indefinitely in very harsh conditions. Here in Menengen, as many as 21,000 Chamorros were imprisoned, starved, beaten, and exposed to the unforgiving elements. They lived under constant threat of massacre, and after the war, it became clear how close they came to suffering that fate. Our people, and with them, our culture and our history could have perished in Menengen, but we did not. Our people fought. They foraged for food. They built makeshift shelters with tangin tangin and coconut. They cared for their loved ones, gave birth, and resisted the violence of their captors. My generation has never known this kind of hardship and I pray that we never will. The honored speaker was war survivor D. Villasoto of Sumai, whose story was shared by her granddaughter, Oriana Villasoto Sevilla. D. had four siblings, Joaquin, Galo, Maria, and her younger sister, Guadalupe. She was four years old when the Battle of Guam began. Her father was in the U.S. Navy on his way back to Guam on the USS Penguin. Her father's ship was attacked by the Japanese and sank. Although he was saved, he was taken as a prisoner by the Japanese. Dee saw it all. She and her family were still at mass when the first bomb dropped. With everyone fleeing in every direction, she lost sight of her mother. Her mother already started riding in her jeepney to Fina, Naval Magazine now. Her brother Gallo and my brother Joaquin 
are the ones taking them. But me and my sister, we started walking from Sumai all the way into Rizal Beach, going into Fina. Eventually, the family was reunited at Fena, including Dee's father. They lived there for a while at their ranch until the Japanese began corralling Chamorros to begin the march to Menenge. After settling into a somewhat normal life, they were told they had to leave. The Japanese informed them they could not stay at the ranch any longer. It was from there that Dee recalls they were taking the Chamorro people into Menenge to be killed. They left Fina with as much as they could carry on their backs and on the caravel, which was already transporting her elderly grandparents. Dee later discovered why her older siblings, Joaquin and Maria, did not accompany them to Menenge. They were taken to another cave in Fina to be executed with many others from Sumai and Agate. Joaquin and Maria later told their family they thought they were going to die. The Japanese ordered them into the caves and started shooting machine guns and throwing grenades into the cave. Joaquin and Maria survived by hiding under the dead bodies of their family and friends, some who sacrificed themselves. One of those killed in the cave was her uncle Juan, who was living with the family during the war. Dia recalls that along with her mother, sister, and brother, there were many others, including her auntie Chung, Nana Chung, and her children, and Manuela Salas Cruz, Kin's wife, and their daughter, Delfina Cruz Pesina. During, born during the war on November 8, 1943, all on their way to Menengen. Her brother, Gallo, was the only boy with them, and her dad was following behind because he had been taken by the Japanese to feed the cows and the carabaos for the Japanese and everything else they needed. She remembers going through Fina up the hill to Menengen and Jotna. Gallo helped carry her maternal grandmother. Her grandfather couldn't carry her because they were too old and they, took, they all took turns riding the carabao. Her mother and my sister carried her younger sister Guadalupe, only one year old, on the march to Menengen. Dee recalls her brother Gallo carrying her and asking, Zaza's how, are you tired? And Dee remembers saying, da da dee, da da dee. And then he would carry her for a while, and when he was too tired, would hold her as they walked. She said, this is my brother Gallo, taking me to walk into Menengen. Living in fear in Menengen, Dee was seven years old. She recalls the last time she saw her brother Gallo, he was among several men who were taken by the Japanese to escort several elderly people up north. But her brother Gallo never returned. They were called the Lost Men of Agate. They were never seen or heard from again. Pain and suffering was all they knew, until one day at the river, when word spread that the Americans were coming. She remembers when the Americans freed the camp scene, more and more Shemarals she didn't even know were there come from all over Menengen. She remembers seeing the Americans and thinking that they were very handsome with their red faces and their big smiles. She was so happy and still remembers how they looked. And her lost brother Gallo, she still remembers Gallo, the brother she never saw again. Almost at the age of seven, after three and a half years of suffering in her own land, Dee was finally freed from enemy hands, physically free, but forever held by the dark memories of the past. Dolores D, Mendiola Cruz, Villasoto, my, my grandmother, can forgive, but she can never forget. Hasu Menengen. The memorial service ended with the passing of what's called a bongbong, which is part of a bamboo filled with water from the Ilig River. And the bongbong that they will be touching represents the will to survive, the life-sustaining water and the helping hands needed to get through those days at Menengen. It also represents cleansing and unity and peace for the future. Uh, on behalf of the war survivors, on behalf of the Menengen Memorial Foundation, on behalf of all the people of Guam, I, it's my honor to ask the Lieutenant Governor to come down, 543210, and at zero, those of you with the boom boom, please pour it in and we'll turn on the fountain. Lieutenant Five, Governor, it's all yours. Five, four, three, two, one, four. Go. Immediately following the memorial service, a mass was celebrated in Chamorro with Pali Eric Forbes. Asana Jesu Cristo, i unico na lohi ni tata. Ogu fumufu na si Isa si agitano, gaya asinohami, 
Ordre for most for Nancy East of Siagitano, receiving international zone mommy. Ordre Matata Sungaga. During the Japanese occupation of Guam, thousands of Chamorros were murdered, raped, tortured, subjected to forced labor, beaten, and beheaded. For what they endured, their sacrifices, we must always remember.